Precious metals are going absolutely crazy right now with gold being up about 4% just in the last few days and silver being up almost 10% over the same time frame. This comes as a reversal of a recent bear market in precious metals, especially as central banks around the world have been tightening. But the question is, when do these bear markets end? When will central banks on average around the world pivot and start to ease again? And then what's the best way to profit off of this new gold? gold bull market. Ready? Let's dive in. Depending on the country that you live in, you might be looking at the performance, the price performance of gold and thinking, eh, nothing to write home about, as right now it's down about 7% year to date. But when we compare that versus stocks like the S&P 500, gold has severely outperformed, with SPY being down about 24%. Now, obviously it's outperformed Bitcoin, which is down about 58%, but it has also outperformed bonds, which are down about 30%, and global real estate down about 33%, which means that gold's performance is actually up versus just about everything except the dollar. Now, this is fantastic performance given the fact that we've been in tightening mode all year long. Normally, gold severely underperforms when monetary conditions are getting tighter. But given the fact that central banks around the world have been stockpiling gold, movements like a new physical gold futures and spot gold contracts exchange in Dubai, and fears of future easing, we've seen some relative outperformance in gold year to date. This is particularly exciting for USD holders because the question is then if it's performed this well during tightening, what happens when the Fed flips finally? It'll probably be longer than most people expect, but when they do eventually flip and pivot and start easing again, that means it's rocket fuel for the price of gold. Now you can go back throughout the last year, two years, watch the videos that I've made about gold, and I'm maintained for a while now that gold reacts to the expectations of monetary policy, not the effects of monetary policy. It's not like some of the other commodities like copper. It's going to anticipate the effects of monetary policy. So if we look at the beginning of 2020, when the market realized that we were about to have trillions of dollars, unprecedented money printing, the price of gold skyrocketed and went up all the way to $2,000 per ounce. But after that massive 40% move from bottom to top here, then the market started to get concerned about the future tightening from the Federal Reserve. Keep in mind, during this time when the money was being printed, no inflation was taking place yet. So gold was front running the inflation. Then as tightening began to be feared, gold started to front run and price in deflation. Now at this point, the deflation in goods and services hasn't happened yet, but the deflation in asset prices has. So when we get any sort of indication that something like this will happen again, where the Federal Reserve will pivot and engage in monetary policy that will cause inflation again, gold will go up again in anticipation of the inflation. It's not going to wait for the inflation to hit. It didn't wait last time. Now, given the fact that we are also seeing a lot of geopolitical turmoil and we're seeing countries start to come out and saying that they're going to try and create new currencies for international trade that are backed by commodities, including gold, it seems like it's only a matter of time before the switch flips and the price of gold starts to go up. Now, some people would like to wait until that exact moment, and that means that they're not going to peg the bottom, but they're going to get it on the way up and they'll probably still get a good price. But other investors like to buy in when there's fear like there is right now so that they can average down into a lower price. There's another set of investors, though, that like to take a little bit more risk and invest in the things that are severely underpriced that have the highest chances of going up even more once this flips. You just don't know how long it's going to take and it might be pretty painful while you watch the price of your assets fall. And that's where we're going to get into the sponsor of today's video, Gold Mining Inc, because they've been engaging in this practice for years now. There was an 11 year bull market in gold that lasted from 2000 all the way to 2011. During this time, the price of gold increased 660%. Now it's fair to say that a bubble had formed, which is why we see the subsequent sell-off afterwards. During that time, miners had been getting a lot of investment, a lot of free money from investors, and there was a lot of waste going on. And so the playbook for Gold Mining Inc. was to say, hey, we're gonna wait 
for everything to crash here because after a bubble, when there's a lot of free money, there's gonna be a lot of players that are gonna go out of business and investment in the space is gonna dry up because investors will get burned on the failed projects and not wanna commit any more money to even the good stuff. And at that point, the market will be at its bottom and we can buy up properties and projects for pennies on the dollar and then all we have to do is just sit on them and wait for the market to catch up and hopefully another bubble to form in the future where we can unload these properties. So they bought properties in Brazil, the United States, Canada, Colombia, Peru, and have said no drilling, no exploration. We're going to sit on these gold mines, if you will, and just wait for the prices to come up. Now, in the meantime, one move that they did make was to spin off a company called Gold Royalty Company. They took their properties all around the world, created royalties for them and packaged them up and then IPO'd it as a separate company called Gold Royalty, raising for themselves a nice chunk of cash in the process. Not to mention the fact that GLDG, Gold Mining Inc., still owns a massive amount of G-Roy, the gold royalty company, shares. Which means that Gold Mining Inc.'s market cap of $137 million is including the share value of 21 million shares of GROI, Gold Royalty Corp., which means it's a $45 million value. Which means that all these properties that we just looked at that GLDG owns are valued only at about $80 million. Which means that when you add up all of the ounces of gold that Gold Mining Inc. owns in the ground, that gold is valued at under $3 per ounce of gold. Most gold companies of this size are valuing their gold in the ground at about $40 an ounce, which gives tremendous tremendous upside if the market will eventually realize the value that is in this company for the market price to reflect. And keep in mind, these are verified ounces of gold because these are gold resources, which means that the previous owner of these properties did drilling and verified the amount of gold that was in the ground. So the question is, why isn't the market price of this stock 10 times higher where it seems like it should be? Well, you've got a little problem that I like to call the Costco problem. When you go to Costco or any bulk warehouse, you buy something in bulk, that means you're getting those things at a discount, right? And so you are able to, as a small entrepreneur flipper, you're able to, as a kid, let's say, go buy a giant box of candy at Costco, take that candy to school and flip each little piece of candy for five to 10 times what you bought it for in the store because you're selling them individually retail. And that's exactly what GLDG is starting to do with its properties. One by one, they're engaging in certain segments of their business to create create something of way higher value that they can separate and sell for a lot more compared to what it's worth inside their entire company. The first example of this was obviously Gold Royalty Company, which they IPO'd and kept a ton of shares of and raised a ton of cash. But next up, they're gonna do something great with this property, Whistler, in the United States, in Alaska. Right next door to this Whistler project is a property with half the grade and is half the size, currently worth about $150 million. So the plan is to take this project, which is ripe for development, spin it off as its own separate company to unlock the value of this property separately. Additionally, there's this next property, the Almaden property in Idaho. Again, a fantastic property, which they just optioned to another company for $16 million. This means this other mining company paid Gold Mining Inc. $16 million for the rights to come in and drill and be a buyer potentially. It's just like when you buy a call option on a stock. You're paying somebody for the right to buy that stock from them if you want to in the future. Same thing here. Another company paid Gold Mining Inc. $16 million for the right to buy the company and in the meantime, do some drilling. And no matter what, Gold Mining Inc. gets to keep that $16 million. That's how options work. Doing the same thing with the rest of its properties means that Gold Mining Inc. is worth about $500 million on options rights alone. And then finally, with the mine in Lamina, this property, they're doing a preliminary economic assessment. It's kind of like creating a blueprint for building a house. With a mine, you make a PEA, and that means that that property is now much more valuable to a buyer because they can buy it and they have the plan laid out right for them to get to work and instantly turn that property into something that is producing. And the reason why Gold Mining Inc. is employing this strategy of taking properties and starting to unlock, unbuck 
bundle that value separately is because, quite frankly, the majors need these projects. The major gold miners out there are struggling to find producing properties, mines that have, you know, producible metal in them. So the big majors out there are looking for projects that are ready to be bought and put into production. It's just like a flipper buying something in bulk when it's cheap, waiting for the price to come up. And in the meantime, doing some value add and creating a little bit more value on those individual pieces before you sell them to somebody at a higher price who wants them later on. Because of all of this, a few months ago in July, Gold Mining Inc. had a buy rating by an analyst at $5.75, which as you can see is over six times higher than where it's at today. However, things have changed over the last couple of months since this buy rating was issued and the analyst upped the buy rating with a price target of $6. At the end of the day, none of this is investment advice and I'm not making any recommendations for what you should or should not buy because I don't know you and your individual situation. Do your own research. What I like to do here is show you the things that are important to look at in companies, whether the mining companies or just fundamental analysis in general, so that you can know how much you should be paying for a dollar. If you know something's going to be worth a dollar or two dollars or three dollars a year from now, two years or three years from now, how much should you pay for that today? Those are the questions that need to be answered. And I hope I answered some of those questions or at least pointed you in the right direction with a company like GLDG. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.